Hi guys, I'm back. So today, I'm going to be doing a video on these little multiplexed um, 5x7 LED matrices. Sorry, my light is a bit flimsy. Anyway, so as you can see, here um, we have 5, five uh, rows by 7 columns. And right now I don't have a second breadboard, so I'm, I can only control this amount of space here. I can't actually utilize it. But anyway, um, you'll find these displays are pretty useful. I mean, that's, um, and it's also pretty cool because it does not matter which way you plug them in. You see right there, it's working the same exact way. So, um, if, anyway, if we change it to my other view here... Um, Essentially, what I have is I just have each. Um, so wait, the way this one works is that the um, these rows here. Sorry, I get rows and columns confused a lot. The rows are negative, and the columns are positive. So, um, so the way that works is I just have a resistor hooked up in the negative rows to just a uh, mega digital pin, and I have the columns hooked up just directly to a mega uh, digital pin again. Um, but in my final design, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, put it with a temperature sensor, and use some shift registers and a regular 328. Um, but, so yeah. So that's going to be the final design. Anyway, as you can see here, it's pretty hard to see, but what we have is we have a square. It gets eaten up by the next color, so that's all green. Green's getting eaten up by red, and yellow's getting eaten up by green. And so on. And then it just goes on forever. This is a pretty standard demo. But anyway, it was pretty easy to implement. Um, the only thing is, just to watch out for, here is that Mega Pins, and I'm pretty sure on all Arduinos, automatically go low, which is going to mess up, because when you're... Um, uh, which one is low? One so Okay. Um, these um, rows here, these are negative. So if your row is automatically negatively uh, gone, and then you conduct for that column, if you purposely make that one low, but you don't want either of these to be, and you conduct for this column, you're going to get all three lighting up because of the fact that um, they are all going to be low unless you set them high. So you have to set everything high otherwise. Just a disadvantage of using the mega pins directly instead of hooking them up through transistors. You can just use a standard um, 3 nanofort to do that. It's pretty simple, just to couple it to ground. But anyway, we'll be going to, into the design here. Okay, so... Here, you've seen enough of that design. We can switch to my little notes here on this stuff. Um, adjust this camera. My buttons are so nice. Anyway, you can see here, this is my little diagram. Okay, so we have the display, and we have each of the dots. And so the way it works is that these rows here are negative, and these rows here are positive. I'll explain this in just one second, okay? And so the first pin on these is going to be, so the first pin on this display, so it doesn't matter what you want, it's just going to be on the side that's the left, so that very first pin right there, because it's first th when you face it this way. Anyway, that very first pin Okay, so, sorry. That very first pin is going to control the negative for this whole row. That means if you pull that pin to ground through a resistor, then it's going to pull the ne the cathodes for all of these lights here on this top row of the display low, okay? The second one, and this is a bicolor display, as you can see, green and red, and if you mix the two together, you get yellow. But anyway, so the next one is the same thing for red, so this top row, negative. The next one is this last row, positive. So that means if we did this row negative, we pulled this one low, and we pulled this one high, that means this dot would light up. I'll explain this in just a second. So as you can see, it goes all the way down, and I've labeled them here plus and minus. Anyway, you can get the data sheet on BG Micro. I'll link to the part number. I'll link to the part site and the data sheet in the description for this video. But anyway, here I'm going to explain how multiplexing works. Because normally, as you can see, we have five by 7, which is 45, times 2, that's 90. But there's only 27 pins on this little display here. So how does that work? It works through something called... Here, oh, let me get this situated. Um, it take a while. Oh, no, that was pretty fast, actually. Okay. It works through something called multiplex. 
multiplexing. So the way multiplexing works is, as I've explained before, here, okay, so uh, these rows are negative, that means if this one is an, if each one of these dots is an LED, that means all the negatives for this row are, I'm a terrible drawer, are connected together and then they're brought out, so this is going to be a pin, so, negative, and then, same thing for this row, all the negatives together, negative, all the negatives together, negative, all the negatives together, and all the negatives together. And then, they would hook the positives for each column, so all those positives are connected together. Um, you can't see that, can you? Ah, uh, there we go, get everything. All these positives are connected together. All these positives are connected together. All of these positives are connected together. All of these positives are connected together. All of these positives and all of these. And, um, so that's the way it works. And then it's the same thing for each color. So essentially, if this was to be green, then you would have a, the exact same one for red. But anyway, what that means is if I pull this pin low to ground, and I put this pin high, that means that we'd have current flowing through here, through this LED, and out. And that would give us this LED on. So say you want to light multiple lights it up. Here, this is where you think multiplexing is pretty simple. But this is where multiplexing gets pretty complicated. If I wanted to turn these two lights on, logic would tell us we just pull these two high, right? And these two low. But that means we'd also get these ones on because this one connects to all of these. This one and this one. Well, this one, these three as well. And this one and this one, these three as well. And uh, this, these two. So that means we would have current flowing through these two and these two, and that would light all four of them on. That is no good. We don't want all four. We just want these two. So what you do is you light this one up, then you turn everything off, and then you light this one on. And you're saying, won't that create a flicker? Well, no, it won't, because if you light them up thousands of times every second, you light this one up, and then you delay a millisecond, and then you leave everything off a millisecond, turn this one on, it's going to appear pretty solid. So you can see here, it's the same as for this display is that only one's on at a time? Well, not, not really. If you look at the code, actually, what I do is these rows are on, and then these, okay, these rows, nothing, these two, nothing, and then the center two. But they all look on at the same time, pretty much, um, except for you can tell the added brightness uh, in, the, in, in these two because they're on uh, for, they have more current to actually, uh, the pins can get more current. Because they're doing a pin set. They, um, a limited current they can give. But anyway, that's how you multiplex. So, yeah, I could turn this whole row on. So if I turn this row on, and this row on, and I wanted to light only these ones, like these outer three, in this row, but I wanted to light all of them in this row, you would have to do the outer three in this row, nothing, all of them in this row. So I hope that helps. And then for my code, it was pretty much, start with a full box, Oops, let me adjust this tripod again. I might run out of time. I only have three minutes, three seconds left. Start with a full box, and then move so that the box, you have a, a color, a different color box surrounding that full box. Change the color of to be the outer color. So essentially, if it starts out green, then you would have red surrounding the green. You would change the whole color of the whole box to red, and then repeat, rinse and repeat, and just put it in a infinite loop. So anyway, if we go back to my original design, and sorry, I have to put the camera shutter over this just so you can actually see it. It's picked up a bit better by the eye, but this display is pretty good. Cool. And uh, if you're wondering why you can use it both ways, is that it's, it's, you can plug it in either way. It does, it does that because of the fact that if you see we have minus minus plus plus minus 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 here we have minus minus plus plus minus 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 now you're gonna say wouldn't that invert everything I drew well no because when you flip it over everything's inverted so as I showed before we can take the display off flip it over make sure to line every pin up and as you can see it's the exact same thing so yeah, I hope that helps. And I'm just running with this this with a mega right now, but you could run this with shift registers. Um, and what I'm doing is just to pull the columns 
sorry, to pull these uh, rows to, to ground, I'm just using resistors and pulling the pin low. But that can't give you, really, you can't give you enough current to light these things up in a bright room like it is now. Uh, so what you really want to do is use some transistors. Um, but I might make a video on using transistors in the future, so watch out for that one. Or maybe if it's in the future already, ooh, fancy, it might already be out. But anyway, um, the reason I'm not using the whole display to do this is because it, it is a 5x7 display is that um, I only have one breadboard at the moment. I broke another one, and this is what's left of it. Just the two power strips. And anyway, if you wonder, ever wonder what's on the bottom, it's just these uh, just two metal bars with clips. Anyway, so um, I'm not using the rest of this display. I can only access these first three. I can access only these first um, four columns in these first three, three rows. So, uh, but if I put on the other side, I could access everything, and I think there is duplicates for this middle row. But, um, that is how you use these simple displays. Um, uh, so, they're, they're pretty simple to use once you get the hang of it. Uh, just remember, you can only really have one light on at a time. It's the best way to do it. And then just, you know, constantly refresh the thing. So, it'd be like on, off, on, off. Anyway, the, uh, the data sheet will be in the video description. The code will be on my website, um, along with the uh, pinout, what to connect to everything. Um, I hope this helped you when you're using it. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe. Go to my website, quicknuclearscience.webs.com. The code will be under quicknuclearscience.webs.com slash files. All the videos get uploaded to the website as well. So um, please go to the website. Enjoy it. I, put, I also have a blog there for extra bonus content. And I only have nine seconds left, so um, we're just going to close out with saying, um, have fun, use this place.